Anybody short? Just one. Well, I got this one. But it, I'm sure I could get a PDF from Gary. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I thought I had enough. Um, <clears throat> Last year's version of pretty close. All right. So, um, welcome. Thanks. I think we're going to be warm pretty soon. We can crack this, man. Yeah. Hmm? We can crack this. At yeah. least one. Yeah. We can crack it. Let's we'll start. We're going to a good wood stove going. Oh, the sun's coming in. It's going to get hot soon. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Um, so, my name's Dan. You guys all probably know that. Um, how many people were here, was that a month ago, for the lecture? Mm -hmm. Sure, but I think you were just a few of you. Uh, you know, so we're still there, just embrace them. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so um, this is the beginning of a two-day course. Uh, today and tomorrow, we're talking about technically <clears throat> um, we're talking about growing healthy plants. But we're really talking about the biological system, life, how to work with it. Um, we'll go into a number of different nuances. Uh, it's a, I like to walk it through the growing season. Um, so we start now with October, November, December, um, and then January, February, March. What are you doing in this time of year for the whole biological system? That's mostly today. And then tomorrow is going to be uh, April, May, June, July, August, September spring and summer uh, planting, transplanting, uh, in-season monitoring, etc. So I'm guessing people here have a pretty decent level of experience, knowledge, practical skills. Um, if you were to name yourself or define yourself as either a gardener, a homesteader, or a farmer, or some combination, how many people would say they're gardeners? Homesteaders? Farmers? <clears throat> um, dealing with uh, annuals, uh, vegetables primarily, many, uh, fruit trees, berries and nuts, um, pasture, anybody animals, four leggeds, two leggeds, few, <laughs> some four leggeds. <laughs> Not yet, but maybe Not in the future. Okay. <clears throat> um, all right. So, I think we have a small enough group we can do quick introductions, um, but I'll start with myself. And before I get into the meat of the day, um, I'll like take questions. So, the more interactive you are about what you're curious about, what you're struggling with, what you want to learn, um, the more you can name that and push it, the more we'll address it. Um, I think we've got a higher, <laughs> higher functioning audience that I sometimes present to, so I look forward to it. Uh, more, more technical, practical conversation. Um, I grew up on an organic farm homestead in Massachusetts. Um, my parents were community organizers. They met in Boston, in Dorchester in the 70s. And my mother grew up on a, grew up on a farm in Illinois. Told my father when she got pregnant with me um, that the kids were going to be raised on the farm, on a farm. And he was welcome to come, if you'd like. <laughs> um, <laughs> They proceeded to buy 30 acres in Central Mass in um, 1980 and built a passive solar homestead, um, you know, wood cellar and um, wood stove with hot water, which was the hot water and the heat and the cooking. Um, <clears throat> we did farmers markets. Um, we did uh, CSAs in the early 90s. Um, sold to restaurants and health food stores, um, and. You know, did a mix of uh, orchardry, um, pasture um, for m mostly pigs and chickens, but some turkeys, occasionally cows, uh, but it was mostly vegetables. Um, so I grew up in that sort of organic milieu. Um, my parents work for NOFA, which you guys are probably mostly familiar with here in Vermont NOFA. Um, anybody who knows Enid Watercott? You know, anybody know who Enid is? Who know who Enid is? Um, that role in Massachusetts is my mother. Um, so uh, my parents were not able to actually make a living farming. Um, they had a homestead and did all these things, but actually worked for NOFA to pay the bills. Um, so I grew up with a background in both you know, 
home setting, but also organizational work, and that's how I've ended up, um, at least thus far. My wife and I have a 24-acre farm in North Brookfield, Mass., which is a couple towns west of Worcester. We bought an old uh, 1880 dairy that was a rundown house was a teardown, the barn was condemned six years ago. Fields were overgrown, um, and we've been salvaging the place. Uh, and now we're doing it on about two acres. Um, like I said, who did I say it to? There you are. <laughs> I made a thousand bucks on Thursday on salad greens. Um, you know, uh, 1500 bucks this week, but that's, it's November now. We were making more earlier. Um, we do pasture poultry, we do uh, grass fed beef. We've got about a half an acre of mixed tube houses, high tunnels, uh, and, and um, caterpillars, but mixed mixed vegetables. Um, it's pretty low tech. We've got one tractor that has a blown head gasket. We've <laughs> <laughs> uh, got a, a, a riding lawnmower and a, a walk behind motor tiller. Um, it's not nothing, nothing, nothing very fancy. Um, I had one guy working for me this summer, but he's left in August, so I've been running it myself pretty much um, for the fall. So it's a, it's a, it's a low-tech, simple operation, but um, one thing I've learned since I grew up on a farm was how to grow plants that were at least more healthy um, and actually bring in a significant cash flow that's um, not all going out to expenses. So that to me is, is uh, valuable and I hope to share some of those principles with you. I mean, I'd love to, love to talk about Metaphysical topics, um, <laughs> frequencies and consciousness and politics and economics and movement strategy and all that kind of stuff. But really, I want to talk about um, principles of biological systems. Um, I've gone through a, a process, basically it started when I got married, when I was actually took responsibility for being a farmer. Even though I've been farming for 20 years, I've been sort of passively going through the motions, this is what you do, without really thinking about it very much. Um, Making seven dollars an hour, or twenty hours a week, and you know, being, that's fine. <laughs> plenty of money, not too much. Um, um, when I got married, I realized that I had to actually make a living and provide for a family. And I like farming. Um, I don't like working for other people. I don't like being inside. I don't like being in front of screens. Um, and I want to be able to hang out with my kids. But uh, the model that's out there for a lot of us is one that's very difficult. Uh, physically difficult, emotionally, um, just really a, an intense um, struggle for a lot of people. So what I really want to share, to the best of my ability, is what I've learned about how to work with life, nature, plants, call it what you want to call it, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss it in depth. Um, it seems to have a, a few basic rudimentary principles, um, what it needs, it needs water to drink, it needs air to breathe, um, it needs carbon, organic matter, sugar, it needs you know, microbiology, bacteria, fungi, that the whole that whole side, and it needs minerals. It needs carbon and zinc and um, calcium and potassium. So a few basic things as far as I understand, if you can basically be proactive about monitoring and managing them, um, life will do amazing things. So that's really what I'm going to try to focus on here in the next two days. Um, today, like I said, is uh, reading, reading a soil test, um, principles, basic principles, minimal tillage, cover cropping, mulching, you know, if you're going to do compost, how you do compost, uh, seeds, seed quality, saving seeds, uh, inoculation, uh, potting soil, uh, principles of basics of irrigation and foliar spraying and stuff like that. Um, and then tomorrow we'll go into, you know, starting seeds, uh, planting, transplanting, seedlings, um, soil preparation, conductivity, uh, in-season monitoring, management, visual analysis, um, stuff like that. So that's the overarching agenda. I like to do, you know, sort of 9.30 to like 11, and then we can take a stretch and, and pee break, and then have lunch at 12.30, and then one, to 1.30, and then another stretch and pee break at 3, and then we're done at 4.30. So that's the basic structure. <clears throat> you guys want to do introductions or questions first? <laughs> introductions. All right. So uh, quickly, uh, who you are, where you're from, uh, what you're curious about learning, and uh, I'll try to take notes. Um, I'm. My name's Duncan. I'm from West Hartford, Vermont, about an hour away. Uh, I just started growing about two or three years ago. Uh, I went to Dan's workshop a couple years ago. 
um, and was really inspired by just what's possible if you pay attention to what life needs. Um, and I have a passion for finding the most nutritious food possible, and I think that it's largely you know, soil health. Um, so, yeah, I do a lot of salad greens, um, and I have about half an acre, and do farmer's markets, sell the restaurants, um, uh, health food stores, co-op. Um, and yeah, I just want to kind of keep growing the farm. I, like I said, I have half an acre, and I'd like to maybe be able to hire some people and get some income and make a living. So <laughs> <laughs> seems daunting, but I think it's possible. Any, anything specific you're looking to um, um, focus on? Um, just review. No, not really. No, I yeah. mean, I think I'll have a lot of questions as you go along with it. Yeah. yeah. Great. Uh, my name is Brigham, and I'm a beekeeper and I'm a local, and uh, I'd love to hear more about conductivity in the soil, for instance, like throwing pennies on your garden. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, I'm Ashley. I've been um, working in Shrewsbury with Scott this season um, on a vegetable farm. And um, yeah, before that, I was just gardening for me, which I've always enjoyed, and this has kind of been my first foray into um, market gardening. It's been really great. I want to continue doing it. Um, and as far as learning, I think I was talking to you last time about just kind of sustainable ways to, um, to enhance soil life without kind of mining minerals from elsewhere to yeah. put them on our gardens um, and ultimately have um, as, I guess, as much as a, a closed close system as possible. Yeah. Ultimately. In my own kind of future, I see animals integrating into that. Perfect. Yeah. Definitely. My name's Elaine. Um, I'm coming to this late in my life, but I feel that I might have another chance in the next life. <laughs> but I've always, I grew up on a farm in Mississippi, so I've okay. always had that in my genetic background. Yeah. And we just moved to Plymouth, Vermont last year, and we have soil that has had nothing growing on it for a very long time. So it's sort of virgin to me, this new area that I have for a garden. And mm -hmm. it's my husband and myself, and I just really want to live the rest of my life eating food that's really nutritious for us. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my goal. Beautiful. <clears throat> Who's next? I guess that's me. My name is Gary. Um, I stay in Barnett, Vermont. Uh, Karma Trolling Meditation Center, where we have um, about an acre of the garden, mm -hmm. and I'm just interested in what you have to say. It's pretty broad. No specificity yet, fair enough. Um, I'm a big fan of, of interjections, so the more of a conversation and less of a monologue it is, the better. <clears throat> I'm Andrew, and I'm with Gary from Carver Uh And yeah, we've got the, an acre there. Um, we try to be uh, low till and as organic as possible. And, and uh, I guess I'm interested in your take on soil testing and uh, and methods for soil augmentation and balance and uh, how that affects pest control um, and disease. Um, keeping things in balance with those surroundings, those surroundings, pressure till life. All right, and everything else you have for us. <laughs> Those are some good ones. Keep going. Don't let me. I'm still listening. Don't worry, you guys. Um, I'm Christy. I'm also working with Scott and Drew here, and I've worked on the meadow. I've printed on the meadow farm for this as well. Um, nothing specific. Mostly just. To learn how to grow nutritious food in the most sustainable way possible. Mm -hmm. All right. My name 
is Jan Hethoven. I grew up on a farm in the Netherlands. Um, had a, um, I had my own farm for six years, organic farm. Uh, grew up on conventional farming, so I saw that whole side of the story. Um, came to Vermont in '88 and started running the Country Challenge Garden since 1990, so we've been there for 25 years. What, what garden was that again? At Country Challenge Garden. Same day as the Sorry. So I, uh, you know, I'm very interested in the whole core topic of nutrient balancing and uh, taking care of the soil. I've been interested in it all along, and I feel like you uh, stimulate a very good discussion here. So thank you. I'm particularly interested in humates, and I'll have a question or two about that. Fair enough. All right. <coughs> I'm um, Terry, I'm the exact store. As the kids grow older, we're going to be downsizing. I'm just curious on how to have a smaller plot and still get a, a, more out of it instead of bigger and spread out. Just yeah. All right. I'm Alex. Um, I'm starting a small biodynamic farm. Uh, we have four acres, but we're working about half an acre to an acre. When all is said and done, we hope to get about an acre and a half. I would love to learn how to like look at a soil test and really grasp what ENR really, you know, effective nitrogen ratio and things like that. I like uh, biodynamics because I've seen it do amazing things, but I would really like to document like before and after, like where our, our soil is at now and where it could be five years from now through annual soil testing. All right. some land, so primarily right now we're looking to reestablish the land and doing that on the weekends, so important to me is, you know, low input, low tech, high output as much as possible, <laughs> the limited amount of time I currently have. Nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> there shouldn't be much to ask for. <laughs> but, 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 you know, low tillage, all those things that are important to us. You know, disturbing the land as little as possible, living in harmony with it, bringing it back. We do a lot of food and nuts and berries. Good goal. Beautiful. Hi, I'm Aislinn. Um, I'm interested, I'm from Massachusetts. I'm interested in a couple of things. One, the property that we bought has a section of land on there that we just put the garden there kind of by accident, but it turned out it was beautiful and the organic matter was, it was over 12% when we had it tested. And I want to know, A, how to maintain that, B, um, how to create that organic matter in other parts of the yard where it doesn't exist, and also sort of uh, very similar efficiency of gardening, because it can't be the time suck that it has been, because we're restoring a house, I have a daughter, I, yeah. I have a job, I... Details. Life? Yes. Anybody wish to say anywhere in here? Yeah, there's a bottom. Very good. Um, I'm Cameron. I'm over in New London, New York. Um, I have Trusted Roots Farm. I started, this is our third season. Um, and we also have a flock of laying hens and um, some goats. And I grow on about two acres, but manage uh, about six. Yeah. Um, and so now that it's, I'm ending the third year, um, I'm seeing more trends. And so specifically, I, I learned on a pretty clay soil, and I have very well drained soil, so I'm still adjusting to how to manage that well. Yeah. Um, and some of the specifics that I'm noticing is um, my brassicas are showing a little bit of phosphorus deficiency, and then specifically my um, charred spinach and beets are inconsistent. So those are specific crops. Inconsistent in what manner? Um, some of it, sometimes it shows in germination, sometimes it's showing in like yields, like size of plant growth. Um, Leaf spots, things like that, discoloration? 
Um, not so much. I mean, the spinach, the spinach specifically it's germination in the fall. Um, beets was a little bit of germination, but could have specifically been on that spot. And it's also yeah. with the beets, it's growth, like bulbing. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, peanut pots? Scott is the one who pulled this whole thing off. I think primarily maybe it was a little bit of support, but um, we wouldn't be here today if Scott hadn't said. Um. <laughs> <That's good stuff>. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just I'm just curious if you've got an extra minute. What yeah. what what have you been your experiences? Because um, I think it's nice for people to get perspective. So try um, things out. one thing I mentioned when Dan was here a couple weeks ago is we haven't you know we haven't accomplished every last thing that's sort of recommended in this course. Um, we 
have come a long way from where we started. So way less tillage, um, trying to do better on cover crops, um, definitely um, making some effort to balance the soil and remineralize every year. Um, lots of foliar feeding and soil drenches. And basically, I mean, we had an experience a couple summers ago where the cucumber beetles on, so we we're just kind of this one little window on this, there's like 12 acres of farm, you know, tilled land that's being used. We we're on an acre and a half or so within that bigger farm. And we had, we had summer squash and zucchini and cucumbers within 30 feet of this other farms, um, similar crops. And theirs were getting totally destroyed, like lost the crop to cucumber beetle damage. And by us taking, you know, using some of these practices, ours were thriving. You know, we'd have a stray cucumber beetle here and there, but they weren't eating our plants. Yeah. Um, uncovered. So pretty, pretty <coughs> remarkable sort of results. We also had a really terrible um, hailstorm July 13th, on our like, second or third year, and we, um, I sort of talked to Dan in the aftermath, and we really um, fed a lot through the drip lines, um, and did a lot of foliar feeding, cleanup, and ended up, you know, within like three weeks, you wouldn't have known the hail had us, like extreme vitality in plants when it's functioning well. So we found a lot of success with, with using some of these methods. Yeah. And I think uh, the X factor is the green thumb. Um, the, much, the attention you give to your crops, the love, the sensitivity, the, I mean, that's, the, that's what you guys, from what I can tell. <laughs> people go to the workshop and they try things on, and some people like, really get things successful, and it seems to correlate with that intention factor. So that's going to be the conclusion of the two days tomorrow afternoon, but that's the theme, hopefully, underlying all of it. We can operate within the physical plane on various metrics and manage them, but <clears throat> the more attention you have and the more coherent it is, I think, um, the more well it all works. So, great. Well, this is a, this is a great list of, of questions. Um, did you want to introduce yourself? Oh, hi, I'm Seamus Barton. I live right up the road. I'm just here to absorb as much information as I can. Um, I think the future is in small, adaptive gardens. Yeah. So, I'm excited to be here. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I heard a theme of, of about an acre and a half going through throughout, and that's about where I'm at. Um, maybe it's just two, I don't know, I haven't actually measured, but um, I think that's a really nice scale, one hectare, you know, of, of land that's in various forms of air, annuals. Um, it's, it's doable, it's a real, it's a, it's a practical scale, um, you can produce a lot. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to operate from memory on the handout. Uh, every now and then I may need to uh, <laughs> borrow someone's to check uh, details. So I think I've got it. I, I, I've done this workshop. Um, the first slide has my uh, contact details. Uh, if you would like to you know, call me or email me, that's that's how you do it. I generally have my phone in my pocket. I generally don't spend much time on the computer. So um, <laughs> if you're willing to give me a call, you might, you might just get me. Um, the term uh, biodetrient, high, bi <laughs> um, <clears throat> high biodetrient crop production. Um, we, uh, this is the Biodetrient Food Association, is the organization that, uh, that's you know, sort of organizing these events around the country, these courses. Uh, it's about a four year old organization um, whose objective is to increase quality in the food supply. Um, and this term biodetrient is one that was sort of created out of thin air to refer to this concept of quality um, in an attempt to sort of name it um, clearly, empirically, transparently, um, and focus the conversation in the food movement around quality. Um, I told you, you know, I grew up in the sort of organic uh, community. There's, there's a biodynamic perspective, there's a permaculturalist perspective, there's the locavores. There's all these different sort of memes and streams in the food movement, which are all really, I think, talking about quality, um, the overall vitality of life, but the quality of the crop as the, as the, as the deeper objective. And it seems that it's sort of gotten, um, you know, as all sort of great concepts do, they've turned religious and 
kind of structures and dogmas and leaders and that kind of thing. But um, the insight, you know, that we're trying to put forth with the BFA is that it's a quality of the drop that's the real central objective. And um, if it's true that quality is something that's, you know, real, that you can taste and smell, uh, we should be able to roughly